Hi, I'm Helma Volk of Turtle Trekker, and I'm going to talk about one of the most despicable creatures in the wild, ticks. Ah, oh, ticks, I hate them. They jump out of trees. They don't jump out of trees. They fly. They don't fly. Oh, yeah, they light on the, on the branch with their Velcro claws and grab you. Well, that's pretty close. Anything that goes by when they're on a branch or a tree or a piece of grass, uh, they'll cling right to it. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's a, a deer or just a, your backpack that you're dragging along or something like that. So if you uh, are backpacking or day hiking and put a, something in the grass, even though you're not touching the grass yourself, that tick <laughs> can be on your backpack or whatever else you've got. We're going to be talking about how to prevent ticks from getting on you or what to do with ticks if you've got them and some of the diseases they can transmit. So you want to protect yourself and your pets as much as possible from ticks. Now not all areas have ticks and you could be a mile from somewhere where it's heavily infected with ticks. So when you're out in the woods or grassland it's best to wear long pants preferably light colored and have your socks over top the bottom of your pants and check yourself often, especially when you're out of the woods or even when you're in the woods, of looking down because ticks can crawl up your leg really quickly. And you also want to have a long sleeve shirt if possible and preferably solid color so that you can see the ticks <laughs> when they're crawling. You preferably want to get them when they're crawling. But ticks can also crawl on the ground. I was eating lunch and a fella next to me picked a tick off his pants and put it about three feet away. Well that tick, we were watching it, it started running as much as ticks can run. They can go pretty fast right back to them because they can smell you. Uh, you put off CO2 and that's what they're attracted to. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The most common product for ticks is DEET. Now the Canadian government bans DEET that has more than 30% DEET and I will go by what the Canadian government says because I trust them and this particular off product is 15% DEET uh, another common product is Picaridin and this is supposedly not as good for ticks uh, it does repel ticks uh, but it's a little bit better with black flies and those seams. Of course, they're both good for mosquitoes. And this will last up to 12 hours, whereas the DEET will last one or two hours. So you got to keep using it if you're in an infected area. And then we have this. Can you read it? Termitrin. Permitrin. And this product by Sawyer is just for gear and you know tents and your sleep well probably not your sleeping bag but your tent your backpack your clothing that type of thing but it's not for skin although there are products with the same name that have a weaker solution that you can put on as a lotion so what about dogs what about dogs yeah dogs 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 well there are products recommended for dogs, uh, Frontline, Next Guard, On Guard, and, and many more. And I would check with your vet to see what he feels about each one of those products or what he would recommend, or she. Uh, but uh, just, you don't want to use DEET on your dog. Mm, no. And some of these products are chewable, some are spot treatments, but what about tick collars? Well, tick collars will keep the ticks from your collar. And that is one place where ticks do like to hide, is under the collar, but it's not going to keep the ticks off the rest of the dog. Uh, can I go now? Yeah, go ahead. While you're still outside, check yourself, check your pants on the outside, and the tick will look for crevices, like if there's a seam if you've got convertible pants, or if you've got a little lip where there's a cargo cargo pant pocket. I'll say that three times. And <laughs> anywhere you can feel on the outside, check your hairline, your hair, feeling your ears. And once you're home, you want to check everything very carefully. 
Now if you do find a tick at home, don't put it in the toilet. A tick can live two, three, even four days in water. So you're just going to get that tick living in the sewage lagoon and they can easily crawl right out of it. Or they can crawl out of a septic tank or even out of your toilet. It's best if you're home to have a jar, like a vitamin bottle, and put some rubbing alcohol in there you know, fill up quite a bit of ways and the tick will not survive in the in the rubbing alcohol. They can survive going through a washer and dryer but you might kill a few of them too. Now people have said that you know I hope there's a hard winter because that'll kill the ticks. No it won't. I lived in Devil's Lake, North Dakota for three winters and the summers too but uh, the first year I was there, every day almost it was 20 below and then it would get up to 18 below and when it wasn't 20 below there would be a cold snap and it would be a lot colder and that was the most tick infested fisted areas I've ever been in. There were wildlife areas that were grasslands and everything else around was pretty much cultivated and you step into the grassland about two feet, I just watched them couple dozen of them crawling up my legs. Ooh, it was not a good idea at all. I lived on nine acres and I had a dog with very thick under fur and I would pick so many ticks off of her. If it's on you, you want to take a tweezer and gently pull the head out straight up, not squeezing anything because if you squeeze a tick, they'll just inject you with their saliva and not only can that be irritating, but if they're carrying diseases, that will <laughs> inject it into you. You don't want to squeeze a tick and you don't want to take a hot match to it or you don't want to take Vaseline or alcohol to it because that sets them in panic mode and that will inject their saliva into you further. Now you can often feel the tick crawling on you, but you'll never feel the tick bite because they inject an anesthetic before they start sucking your blood. Now if you don't take a tick off, it can stay on you, sucking your blood, getting bigger and bigger for anywhere from three days up to ten days, depending on the life cycle of that tick when it started biting you. There are nymphs all the way up to adults and the adults stay on you longer. But anyway, if you get it right away within a few hours, it's not going to inject any disease into you, they say, uh, because it's more towards the end of the cycle of their blood getting is where they can uh, infect you with the disease. So, that's good news. <laughs> Now in the United States there's about 90 different types of ticks and 16 different diseases that ticks can carry but most individual ticks will not be carrying diseases but you cannot tell by looking at a tick or you know whether it's a disease carrying tick or not but they say if you are removing a tick save that tick put it in a plastic bag or a jar and put that in the freezer. Now the freezer is not going to kill the tick necessarily but it will keep it for identification in case you start developing symptoms later on. And the most common two diseases are Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever which can be found in any part of the United States and Lyme disease which can also be found almost any part of the United States, but it's more prevalent in the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, and the Great Lakes states. The way to remove a tick is to take a pair of tweezers and you should carry alcohol wipes and tweezers with you. And there are special tweezers for ticks, but ordinary ticks will do. And you want to get that tweezer as close to the skin as possible. Do not squeeze a tick, just gently pull it straight up, do not twist. Now if you're bitten with a tick that has Lyme disease it may show a target type rash within a few days but it might not. And the symptoms do not happen right away. Your body's got to develop antibodies to it. So if you get bitten by a tick 
You cannot go to a doctor and have them tell you if you've got Lyme disease or not because you haven't developed the antibodies yet and you haven't developed any symptoms yet. The symptoms may take a couple weeks to several months to show up. They show up in so many different ways. Facial distortion, uh, joint swelling, especially knees, aches in the joints, arthritis, uh, a heart problem, dizziness, severe headaches, uh, things that may mimic other things and you may not remember ever being bit by a tick because it happened a couple months ago or three months ago and now it's winter or fall and the ticks have pretty well gone. Uh, uh, so just beware and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, that's the main symptoms is a spotted rash all over you that shows up maybe in five days or so and that just about has to be treated by a doctor right away as soon as possible because um, the symptoms can be pretty severe. I've got links to articles with more information. Also links to these Sawyer products. And you can really help my channel out by subscribing, uh, giving a thumbs up, leaving a comment, or anything else you want to do. <laughs> this is Selma Volk, out.